In terms of impact evaluation, evaluating the impacts of our policies and programs, the environmental area and conservation uh, included is in the dark ages compared to most other policy fields like medicine, public health, uh, poverty, labor, training, education, even criminal justice, they're much more advanced. And not only that problematic because we don't have the evidence base that a lot of other fields have, but we also have one of the most difficult contexts to do evaluation in. We've got large air sheds and watersheds. We have complex spillover relationships. We've got impacts that we don't expect to see for 5, 10, 20 years. So we've got really complicated scenarios to evaluate impacts, and the kinds of approaches we're using are rudimentary, things that were used decades ago in other fields and have long since been abandoned. So one of the biggest problems we have in the environmental context is we don't design our new policies and programs with the intent of evaluating them. We talk about monitoring and evaluation, often what we're really doing is just monitoring. We're looking at trends and status of the forest, of fuel wood, of people's assets. That's not the same as evaluation where we want to draw inferences or understand why is that trend going up, down, staying the same. And it's hard to do that without designing the program at the beginning to be evaluated. We don't collect the right data. We collect huge amounts of data, but it's not the right data, so we can't draw any inferences from it about program impacts. So we need to design more new policies and programs right at the start with the intent of, let's try to evaluate this program. Let's not assume it works, and let's take it as a hypothesis. We have good reasons to believe it works, and design it where the explicit intent is not only to achieve whatever social objective we're trying to achieve, but to generate evidence about whether this works and under what conditions does it work. And we don't do that. Part of the problem that, uh, that we have is we don't have a lot of evidence about the value of evidence, right? So does it matter if I can show credible evidence that things work, or are there more important things to policymakers than whether something works or not? Is it politically popular might be more important? Do important stakeholders like it or not? That might be more important. Uh, and how to communicate that evidence is harder to do. That's why it's important if you integrate the evaluation in the beginning and get buy-in from the policymakers about this is the design that we're using, usually it's a lot easier to, to present those results in a credible way because people, the policymakers were asking the questions. They want to know whether this works or not. They understand the, roughly how the design is going to work and how we look at the evidence at the end of the, the time period. And that's going to make it more convincing, whereas a lot of the evaluations we're doing now, policymakers didn't ask for. And they're being done with very sophisticated methods because the programs weren't designed to be evaluated. And so that makes it much harder to communicate when the policymakers didn't ask for these evaluations. And the methods are very complicated and opaque. And I want to be clear. I don't know the answer. All I know is, zero is not the right number. And that's essentially what we have now. Right? We were close enough to zero to, be, to say it's approximately zero. So I don't know if the optimal level is 10% of our programs, 20%, 40% of our programs should be evaluated. But it's certainly not zero where we are now, so we need more. And I would say it's not 100%. Most programs, I've seen some uh, nonprofit organizations who now have in their mission statement to evaluate the impacts of every one of their programs and initiatives. And that's not possible. Most of these programs will be too difficult. We should be putting our money into programs that are very popular, payments for environmental services, protected areas, decentralization and devolution, uh, information and technology transfers, subsidies for forestry, those sorts of things that we're doing in lots of places, and that we have a good opportunity to learn something from some of the pilot programs uh, that are out there. Uh, and learn from those. And then for the others, we're just going to monitor and, and try to extrapolate and fumble along in the dark. So my answer is more than we're doing now.